More developments in the CM Punk Hangman Adam Page drama as it's now being reported that CM Punk has apologised directly to Hangman after his comments after Collision went off the air this past weekend. There's also been an update suggesting that Hangman Adam Page wasn't removed from the arena, rather he was just told they were going to move their pre-tape that was recorded on Saturday to somewhere else and CM Punk was not responsible for this. Plenty of more details in this developing AEW news story. Hey guys, welcome back to Rest News 365. Hope everyone is doing very well. As always, there are plenty of news stories to get into in the world of All Elite Wrestling. And the biggest one right now is all of this drama surrounding CM Punk, Hangman, Adam Page, Ryan, Nemeth, The Elite, etc, etc, etc. The fallout from people being sent home or removed from AEW Collision, CM Punk's list of people he doesn't want at the show. There's a lot of drama going on right now. And they, we've got a bit more of an update when it comes to CM Punk's comments after AEW Collision went off the air on Saturday. And actually CM Punk feeling bad about what he said about Hangman Adam Page, so much so that he actually texted the former AEW World Champion to apologise. Now, CM Punk, of course, opened a can of worms last week when he took a shot at Hangman Adam Page once again, but reports suggest that he has actually apologised to Hangman Adam Page. A report by Voices of Wrestling's flagship wrestling podcast has revealed that Punk personally apologised to Hangman by text message for the comments he made after last week's AEW collision. The report further states that Punk wasn't happy with the way he delivered his post-collision promo as he felt he shouldn't have touched upon merchandise sales. The 44-year-old is taking shots at the elite, so that's there's a possibility that he can feud with them in the future as per the report. They're suggesting that CM Punk is actually prodding and taking these shots as he's trying to work himself into an angle. Now, at last week's collision, a few AEW stars were sent home, one of whom was Hangman Adam Page, Possibly, more details on that to come. And the report revealed that Punk did not play a role in that decision. He also reportedly told people that it was not his decision to send home Isaiah Cassidy and Matt Hardy, but conceded indeed he was responsible 100% for Ryan Nemeth and Christopher Daniels being sent away from last week's show. An unnamed AEW star told the flagship wrestling podcast that Punk is not interested in having certain AEW Dynamite stars on collision and that he is involved in several aspects of the Saturday show, including producing matches and segments. The real-life feud between CM Punk and Hangman Adam Page came to a head during Punk's now infamous comments following last year's AEW All Out show, where he accused Page of going into business for himself. After last week's uh, collision, Punk mocked Page's ability to sell merchandise. Here's the comments he had to say if you missed them. Yes. And I figured out why they call him Hangman. It's <laughs> because the pegs in the toy aisle are full of Hangman action figures because nobody wants to buy them. <laughs> He's a peg warmer. Unlike me, who moves merchandise, yes. pops ratings, yes. and sells toys. The GOAT. GTS, go to sleep. I don't know what I'm trying to do. I got rocked too. I told the house, house of black, no chops, and the chop is very mad. <laughs> now, it was previously reported that CM Punk, as I mentioned, apologized to Hangman Adam Page for the comments he made about him after AEW Collision went off the air this past Saturday night. But Brian Alvarez and Dave Meltzer have discussed the situation on Wrestling Observer Radio with Alvarez confirming that indeed it's not just other reports he has heard the same thing he is confirming that punk did indeed send an apology to hangman adam page via a text message alvarez disclosed that the information was confirmed on both sides not only from cm punk's camp but also from the elite's camp as well now regarding punk's latest shots at page Meltzer said the story he got from people defending punk was that it was quote an attempt to do comedy a comedy line that backfired so he was trying to be funny and it wasn't that funny meanwhile 
Meanwhile, it was reported that Page was not able to be at the collision taping on Saturday night, despite him being in town to do a pre-tape backstage interview. It said he had to film his segment at a different location, with rumours suggesting that it was a call made by the real AEW World Champion. Christopher Daniels and Ryan Nemeth, who Punk allegedly confronted backstage in June regarding a social media post calling him soft, were also reportedly told to leave the arena ahead of collision at the request of Punk. Alvarez shared some further light on the Punk page situation during the Wrestling Observer radio show. Here's what he said, quote, I did hear from people that said they would not be surprised if, in fact, because of what happened earlier with Ryan Nemeth, it was in fact management's call or Tony Khan's call not to have Hangman come to the building. After what happened to Ryan Nemeth, I did talk to people who believe that actually could be true that Punk had nothing to do with it and that the decision was made because of what happened with Nemeth. Now, again, that's quite interesting, certainly, isn't it, about what he's saying there. Uh, Dave Meltzer is also saying that everyone is agreeing that Punk did get Daniels removed from the collision taping, with Punk allegedly believing that if A. Steel, who is his close friend and a producer at AEW, isn't able to attend the shows, then Daniels, who is the head of talent relations at AEW, shouldn't be allowed to attend either. Now, it's said that Steel and Daniels were both involved in the post-AEW All Out 2022 locker room skirt involving CM Punk and the Elite. Meltzer noted that there are people who aren't affiliated with either side who are frustrated that these incidents continue to happen and it's a continuation of sort of the issues that haven't really been resolved since last year and since the brawl out incident. Now, Sean Ross Apple Fight for Select has also tweeted this afternoon, kind of confirming the other reports that are out there. He tweeted, quote, On a serious note, I can say that I have also heard that CM Punk sent an apology to Hangman Page. He also seemed sincerely confused about the story regarding Hangman being booted from Collision. I realize that coincidence may be too much for some to believe, but he's been quite forward about not welcoming Nemeth there. And he's going to say that he's going to have more in an update coming later today. Now, Peter W Insider has given a bit more of an update on this as well. Of course, CM Punk fired those shots at C uh, Hangman Adam Page after the show went off the air, arguing that Page can't sell merchandise and pop ratings like him. Following this, again, it was reported that Page was sent to Greensboro for the taping, where he was set to do a pre-tape interview backstage for this week's episode of Dynamite. But when he got there, he was told they would have to do it away from the building and for him not to go to the show. It was later reported, as I mentioned, that CM Punk, quote, felt bad about his comments and because they didn't come across the the way he had hoped them to and it was later reported that CM Punk had later apologized to Hangman Page via a text message. Now Mike Johnson of PW Insider has reported the following which is quite interesting about this. He has said, quote, Sources within AEW confirmed to PWInsider.com this morning that Hangman Page was not, quote, removed from this past Saturday's collision taping. It was simply a case of the location of the promo being moved to a different place, which had zero to do with CM Punk. The belief is that the Punk promo after the show bled into the promo being moved by those looking to knock Punk. As we noted yesterday, Page lives in the Greensboro area, which is why the promo was going to be filmed that day. It was not a case of the company sending him on the road and then sending him home. We're also told by the same sources that Punk texted an apology to Page early Sunday morning, but the same sources remained unaware if the two sides had conversed, just that an apology had been sent. Punk noted that he was, quote, rocked during the same post-match promo, but no one has confirmed he was concussed during the six-man tag team match against the House of Black. So certainly a lot of the same sides here are saying a similar kind of thing, which is that Punk did indeed feel bad about the promo and about the words he said about Hangman Page, that he did indeed apologize. But as far as the reason for Hangman Page being sent away, whether or not it was a Punk call, whether it was a management call, Meltzer and Brian Alvarez and PW Insider are now sort of saying that actually it might have been a management call, but certainly one thing's for sure, CM Punk is absolutely responsible for Ryan Nemeth and Christopher Daniels both not being allowed to attend Collision Show. So, again, what are your thoughts on this? Is this just more BS? Is this just more drama? Is this just more of an example of why Tony Khan needs to get a handle on this situation? Are we going to continue to have incidents like this? Or... Is this the beginning of CM Punk maybe mending fences with Hangman Page if he's receptive to the apology? Let me know your thoughts about it in the comment section below. Now, as I mentioned, one person that has been involved in all of this is Ryan Nemeth. Of course, he's the younger brother of WWE superstar Dolph Ziggler. Now, Dolph Ziggler has been away from WWE programming since the May 
29 episode of Raw, but he actually made a cameo appearance on this week's episode of Being the Elite. In a video filmed by his brother, Ryan Nemeth, Ziggler was seen signing posters for a comedy show that they were doing together. Nemeth then asked his older brother if he was aware of the Young Bucks re-signing with AEW, but referred to the AEW EVPs as the Jackson Brothers instead of their stage names, which seemingly confused Ziggler. Tito and Michael, Ziggler responded, making a reference to the brothers from the famous Jackson 5. Nemeth then joked that he'd have to blow out Ziggler, a WWE superstar, from the show, but Ziggler encouraged his brother to keep him in the footage. Quote, you've put me on BTE at least seven times before, at least my voice or my hand, Ziggler said, downplaying the notion that WWE would have a problem with him appearing on the AEW-centric show. Ryan Nemeth, as I mentioned, has been a regular fixture on being the elite over the past year or so, which would explain his friendship with the Young Bucks and the rest of the elite. His closeness, though, to the faction was on full display when he referred to CM Punk as, quote, literally the softest man alive in a now deleted tweet, which led to a backstage altercation with Punk. According to reports, Nemeth and Punk buried the hatchet after the latter explained why the tweet risked inflaming the tensions between him and the elite. Subsequently, Nemeth was sent home from a taping of AEW Collision, as Punk reportedly felt he did not want stars from AEW Dynamite appearing on a show that he had been hands-on booking and producing, albeit in an unofficial capacity. As I mentioned, CM Punk did not take credit for Hangman Page being sent away or Matt Hardy and Isaiah Cassidy. That reportedly was a management one, but took 100% accountability for sending Nemeth home as well as Christopher Daniels too. Now, speaking of the Elite, reportedly, of course, we know they've stayed with AEW, but they might have been quite close to actually going to WWE. All Elite Wrestling was able to avoid several of its biggest stars jumping to WWE or hitting the free agency thanks to big bucks and friendly schedules. According to people those close to AEW, this comes from a report from SE Scoops, by the way, an exclusive report from SE Scoops. All of the reports are in the video description below. They always are. According to those close to AEW, Matt and Nick Jackson, Kenny Omega and Adam Page were actually likely on their way to World Wrestling Entertainment if any of the four wrestlers hit free agency. But that changed when AEW owner Tony Khan renewed a push to get the Elite signed, including more money and the ability to make their own schedules. Matt and Nick Jackson have long cited family as one reason they have avoided WWE and its longer travelling schedule. Paige, who has a young child, has also cited travel as a reason he favoured AEW schedule. Omega and the Jacksons were making seven figures prior to the new contracts, with Paige in the six figure range according to a source within the company. All four received raises which pushed Omega and the Jacksons further into the million dollar club and added Paige into it as well who is now making six figures a year. While the reports for months said the Elite were likely staying in AEW, the group of four, who made the uncon unconventional decision of staying or leaving as a group, were likely to be bound to WWE if they hit free agency. Quote, the first contract with AEW was about making sure they could retire, one source said. That contract took care of them for good. This contract takes care of their kids, their grandkids, college tuition, all of it. This is about the next thing. WWE was seen as having more to offer by some members of the group. After four years in AEW, there were new challenges ahead, a fresh start after the Punk incident as well, as the chance to wrestle in a company they've all watched since they were kids. There was also the chance to ply their trade for WWE and its multimedia behemoth. Also attractive was years of fresh opponents and storylines in WWE. Quote, it was very attractive, the idea of seeing if they could stay true to what they want to do in the business and doing it in WWE. It would be very hard, almost everyone fails at it, but you see Cody. Some of the group also considered their role in helping secure a second major company in the wrestling business for the first time since WCW closed and was sold to WWE in 2001. Quote, that's always going to be their legacy. I think that's always going to be Cody's biggest legacy. Yeah, he might win the WWE World title and he's definitely their number one babyface, which is a major, major historical spot. But Cody's legacy is starting a real competitor, ensuring that it stays healthy and alive, probably played a factor with the elite. Yeah, that competitor is very healthy healthy right now and probably getting healthier soon, but they played a big role in that. Of course, the Young Bucks are scheduled to wrestle with FTR for the AEW World Tag Team titles at the All-In pay per at Wembley Stadium in London, England. So there you go, guys. This latest AEW news for you. Be sure to smash the like on the like button. Be sure to subscribe bottom right-hand corner. As always, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below, and I'll speak to you again very, very soon. Hey guys, thank you for watching, listening, streaming, or however you come across this video today. Be sure to click on the video on the right there to watch our next video, or click the bottom there to subscribe, or the bottom right-hand corner. Thank you very much, and I'll speak to you again very soon.